Alex Grieve, better known as Ivy Crazy, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to build the Spectre, the Wraith, and the Marauder airplanes. The Spectre, Wraith, and Marauder are what I call basher airplanes. Their sole purpose, pure fun. They're moderate range, moderate speed, high stability, high durability airplanes that are great for those missions where you want to fly between those tight trees or fly under that bridge or even under that park bench that you're afraid of risking a nicer airplane. Nice thing about this, you don't have much of a conscience when your plane doesn't break easily. The other nice thing, this is a very good beginner's airplane because it doesn't get away from you too fast and, well, crashing isn't such a big deal. Well, what's the difference between the three airplanes? Well, the Spectre has a single motor in the rear and a slightly smaller tail in the back than the Wraith and the Marauder. The Wraith, this model, is a twin motor up front the Marauder is the same airplane as this with a slightly different fuselage, so it can accommodate a rear motor as well as the two in the front for three motors of power. What do you get in the kits? Well, of course, you're going to get the foam, you're going to get spars, you're going to get hardware, and the nice thing is you're also going to get glue. And for added durability, Laminating film comes in all of the kits. I highly recommend laminating it. The plane will take a beating like you wouldn't imagine with this film covering the airplane. A few notes about building it. First of all, it's best to keep the airplane light. A Spectre should be kept around two pounds or about one kilogram. A Wraith and a Marauder can go up to two pounds, eight ounces. They can go a little bit heavier than that. They're more powerful. I recommend keeping them light. The reason is you can slow them way down and just take the plane and maneuver through those tight obstacles due to the forward swept wing on the airplane that does not want to stall. You'll be amazed. You can fly this thing in high alpha and still retain control of it. Another thing is please, please use the spars included. I know they seem weak. When you put it in there, you will be surprised how stiff that wing actually is when the glue dries. Another thing to note is with these motors, the twins point them down so the shaft coming through points at the back of the tail, right up about here. The reason is if they are pointed straight or up, when you throttle up, it'll pull the nose up and the plane will go into a stall. And it's quite irritating when you're trying to get out of a situation. You hit the throttle and all you're seeing is blue sky as the plane takes off and goes vertical on you. It's great for line of sight, but for FPV, the sky looks blue no matter if you're here or here. Once completed, your airplane should resemble something like this. As far as the, the nose piece goes, I like to use a pan cam because, well, flying where you can see side to side is very good for obstacle dodging. The other thing is, with this PT-260, I can actually look over my own spinning motor, and there is no better view in FPV than looking over your own wing with a spinning motor. Awesome. Highly recommend it. To get this to stick on, I just use sticky back Velcro. Some people use magnets. Either way, that way you can plug your battery in, drop it on, and you're ready to fly. Something very simple like that. You want your lead to come through about this far and leave enough room to tuck it down inside. That way it's easy simply to plug your battery in. If it's short and back, back inside, it's very, very difficult to plug your battery in, if not impossible. Also, I'm using two bolts to secure this down to the bay, but if you never intend to take the airplane apart, glue it. Just take that welder adhesive and run a bead along here and along here as well as the same on the bottom. That's more secure than the bolts. The bolts are more for people that want to unscrew it and take it apart for transport. We're going to start this build starting out by cutting the battery bay. To cut the battery bay, pop this out of the airplane. Take your battery, place it on the foam, and use a pen to drag lines to mark out where your battery goes. Then take a razor knife and cut down those lines. Once you've cut your supports, it's time to install them and glue the fuselage together. Take the fuselage, 
open it up and add a copious amount of adhesive to the exposed surfaces. Make sure you pull these plugs out of the chambers. Press together, move it around a little bit to be sure you've got a good coating. Remember where these came from. Add your glue. And install on the aircraft. Okay, while you're waiting for your fuselage to dry up, the next step will be to glue the wing together. Note that the wing is swept forward towards the front of the airplane. Take your glue and start by adding a copious amount of glue to the center part of the wing. Press them together and move them around so you get a good coating of glue on both sides. Then you glue the tip on. Again, add a fair amount of glue to the front portion only. You don't want to glue your aileron together. And again, press, rub together, and pull apart. This is a contact adhesive, so it takes time to dry. Again, add a copious amount to the edge of the wing, rub it together, and pull it apart. Okay, so the glue has been drying approximately 10 minutes. It's now time to press our wings together. Best way to do that is line up the leading edge and then just simply slide it together and press very firmly once in place. Repeat with the wing tips. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is install your spars. It's good to use a straight edge, but you can use the spar as a straight edge and it will work just fine. Now, I know what you're thinking. These spars seem small, weak, and flimsy. They're not. When installed properly, they are stronger than any spar you could possibly put in this aircraft. Please trust me, you will be amazed how well this works. Measure approximately an inch and a half back. I say approximately because it doesn't really matter that much, so long as the top and bottom spar are directly over top of each other. Take your pen, inscribe a line all the way across the wing. Then with your knife, cut only about an eighth of an inch into the foam. You only want to go down just barely deep enough to bury the rod in the foam. Then again, take your welder adhesive, and inject a copious amount of glue into the track you cut. Now take your spar, and press it firmly into the wing. Be careful not to slide your hands down this spar. It's fiberglass. It will get, if that gets into your fingers, it will itch for days. Trust me on this. I know from experience. Once installed, Flip the wing over, place it down, and again, 
repeat the process. Laminating the airplane should be done with a simple covering iron, but if one isn't available, a clothing iron works fine. Keep the temperature around 200 degrees or so to do this. Start in the middle of the wing with the laminate at the rear. Put a good amount of pressure down and work your way towards the wing tips being careful to keep moving so you don't overheat the foam underneath. Once you have the top covered, take your knife and slice straight down the center, out the foam, flip the wing over, pull the laminate tight, and repeat the process. Be careful not to hit the exposed foam with a covering iron because it will melt it. All you want to do is iron the covering on. Once you've got the laminate on, remove all of the excess. Use a section of the excess to cover up the center that was exposed. Once your wing is laminated and trimmed, you need to install the servos. I highly recommend installing your servos vertically, like this, instead of flat. This gives the servo a lot more strength, and that way it won't come free as easily. Also, it's a lot easier to extract should you strip the gears out or something like that. Your kit will also come with laser cut control horns and two holders. The way these work is the holder gets placed over the control horn, the control horn gets placed through the foam, then the bottom holder gets snapped on and slid back against the hooks so it can't pull off, making a solid joint. You want to glue it. When doing this, you want to install this as close to the center of the aileron as possible. This will keep the aileron from warping in flight at high speeds. Take your knife, make a small cut where this is going to be installed, simply press it through the foam, and wherever it comes out the other side, make the same slice. Place the first lock on the control horn and place a little bit of glue around the whole unit. Stick the control horn through, place some glue around the outside Take your other locking plate, press it down tight, and then slide it backwards into the lock position. Once in, add a little bit more glue to make sure it's not going anywhere. And there you have it, a very, very, very secure 
control surface. Okay, now back to the fuselage. Take your blind nuts and add a small amount of glue to the flat surface and install in the wooden supports. Then drive the blind nut into the wood. Add glue to the sides here as well. And install in the slots in the fuselage. Next you're going to take a drill bit or some other device and punch a hole down through the fuselage. You will see these small divot cutouts. Those mark the center of the supports you just put in. The foam can be drilled out very simply by hand. Just press in, twist, and pull out. Then to verify the alignment is correct, take your bolts and simply screw them in a few turns to make sure everything's lined up. Laminating the fuselage is fairly simple. Lay out your laminating film. Over the entire fuselage, simply take your iron Work it down the whole fuselage. Once bonded up, flip it over and repeat. Once you've done the whole fuselage, then you'll come through and trim the excess off, fold it over, and laminate it on. The tail is pretty simple. You're going to make this into a hinge by removing a single flute. To do that, extend the blade out of the knife just a little bit, and then take it and drag it along one of the ribs. Then do the same thing on the other side of that same rib. Be careful not to cut all the way through the chloroplast. Then move it back and tear off a piece of plastic and you have a hinge. The tail accepts a mini sized servo of between 9 and 16 grams and slides right light through fairly snug. Simply press it through and then add a little bit of glue to keep it secure. From there, in your kit you're going to find a control horn. Place it on the flute closest to the hinge and simply take a screwdriver or a servo screw and press down to mark your hole. Drag screwdriver through, take one of the set screws, put it through, install it, and then repeat the process on the other side. Simply unscrew the servo plate, this one happens to be a pain in the butt, place it over the screw holes. 
and tighten it in. To make the linkage, again, connect your clevises. Eyeball up about how much all thread you're gonna need. Take a pair of diagonals or wire cutters or pliers. Cut it off. And make your linkage. To install the motor, you can either use glue or you can bolt it in. In my case, I'm going to glue it in because I feel it's a little bit more secure, but if you want to bolt it in, you can use uh, 440 screws, inch and a half long, and bolt it in. The first thing you're going to have to do is secure the motor to the motor plate. Then, apply a little bit of glue to each of your side plates. Then add a bit of glue along the sides of the motor. Slide it in. Should be a fairly tight fit. Okay, make that a very tight fit. And simply press it together. You want a little bit of down thrust. You want this shaft, the motor shaft, to point directly between your two spars. So it'll be at an angle sort of like this. So point your motor a little bit down. So it essentially it points about here on the tail. That'll give it a little bit of down thrust. Now, if you're gluing it in, remember this is a contact adhesive, so if it just continues to fall, you can always remove it and slide it on later. And simply press it together. You want a little bit of down thrust. You want this shaft, the motor shaft, to point directly between your two spars, so it'll be at an angle sort of like this. So point your motor a little bit down, so it essentially it points about here on the tail. That'll give it a little bit of down thrust. Now if you're gluing it in, remember this is a contact adhesive, so if it just continues to fall, you can always remove it and slide it on later. All right, if you're building a Spectre airplane, you're gonna build the motor mount so it looks like this. It has two runners down the sides, a base plate, and then the motor mount plate. The motor mount plate has a proper position so that it slides into the slots here. This motor mount will fit tight to the fuselage. The bolt will end up going through this hole and into here. You're going to need to cut a section similar to this out of your wing in order for the motor to fit in. Now this model, the Marauder, uses the back of a Spectre with the twin booms of the Wraith and has three motors. You also notice the motors on this are relatively small. With three motors you do not need big motors. This is more than enough power to take this plane vertical. Your wiring harness is going to look something like this. For the Spectre, you'll put your speed control in the bay, right here, which lands about there. Run your wires down through, out, through the back of this, and your wires will pop out here. The Wraith simply create a channel down through the wing, join together, and come out the front. And then of course the Marauder, well you've got a mess of wire like that and I don't think there's any way to avoid that. I might be crazy and keep them flying.